Pereira Velasquez downfield. Sayuo battling Lois. Sayuo onside. Sayuo delivers for St. Peter's. The freshman again, the Carney killer. And with 2.21 to go here in the second half, St. Peter's is back up by one. With 10 seconds, he's got Carey in front of him. Solar slides one through. Santa Moro breaks it up, comes inside the 18. Two seconds left, cleared aside by Kirk. And we have a final. St. Peter's prep, the kings of Hudson County for the first time since 2019 as they defeat Kearney here in the Hudson County Tournament Championship game. High arcing floater too strong. Rebound tapped around. The three to win the game. No good. And Brett survived. The Marauders have won their first sectional championship since 2014. 2-2 is in the air to right field. Going back is in front of He makes the play. And St. Peter's Prep retains its glory on the diamond. The Marauders are your 2023. Hudson County tournament champion. Two seconds left. Cleared aside by Kirk. And we have a final. St. Peter's Prep, the kings of Hudson County for the first time since 2019. Downfield, Sayuo battling Lois. Sayuo onside. Sayuo delivers for St. Peter's. Here's Jude with nine. If eight with seven. Sergeant scores! Eight. Pass. Complete to Reese. That's going to be a first down. That's going to do it. Welcome, everyone, to episode number 128 of the State of Mars podcast. Sponsored by our good friends up on Patreon, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Patreon, again. We got up to 15 people right now on Patreon, including our good friends Eric Zabrowski, Frank Briamonti, and Susanna Grasconi. All right, you get all the live updates that I do right on your phone ahead of everybody else. So you get that first foremost, and you get the live podcast video form before everybody else does. You gotta go, and it goes right to your phone. You don't have to worry about you know going on social media, going.com. It's, it's all right there on Patreon. So make sure you subscribe today. Two dollars a month, you get seven day free trial as well. So sign up today at patreon.com slash state of the murders. Again, that's patreon.com slash state of the murders. Hello, everyone. I am Renato Rodriguez of the class of 2010. I'll be your host for this episode. I don't want anybody else this week, unfortunately. You know, Justin Pennick, he was on the broadcast with me last week. He was on the podcast as well last week. But he's out celebrating, as of this recording Sunday night, the Giants' second victory of the year. I'm the Giants. That's okay. Jets are going to play them next week, so Jets are going to win. That's okay. But but our other friends, Jackson Briamonte, Nasi Amaro, you know, our, our students in the club, they're getting ready for school tomorrow. So, you know, they, they, they can't make it either. So it's okay. It's all right. You know what I mean? We're going to talk about everything that happened with our Marauders this week, including the big topic of the week, ladies and gentlemen. We already know what we're going to talk about first. That's the soccer team being Hudson County champions for the first time since 2019. Let's go. But, but you know, they, 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 before we talk about, you know, that beautiful trophy, you know, we got, we have to talk about a lot of things before we talk about the trophy. We're going to talk about the two other matchups that they had. All right. So we're going to talk about the matchup early in the week against Union City, the final divisional matchup to, to potentially be co divisional champions against Carney. And, and boy, ladies and gentlemen, when, when I tell you this was a back and forth battle, it was a back and forth battle. Brandon Arandondo from Union City strikes in the first three minutes of the contest, making one nothing. Union City, John Kerry get a penalty, 
to tie it up on one. In the 15th minute, we're going to second half. Marge will strike right away. Great play by Jane Reed down the right flank to flank Christian Pereira Velasquez coming on the left side. Makes it 2 1 Marauders. Sebastian Cantos will counter that. So will go 10 minutes later. But then Philip Syro, you can hear that name a lot. Philip Syro with the great feed to Lucas Santos off the great individual effort. He buries it 3 2. Marauders are hanging on to win that one 3 2. To be co divisional champions with. Carney, okay, so co digital championship with Carney, which is nice. But I want to talk about Carney just yet. I don't want to talk about them yet because we got to talk about the game after the Hudson County final, which they took on Dixon, a squad who are the divisional champions, but not, not in the same division as ours, right? So there's two divisions of Hudson County, including the American division that's between the Marauders and Carney. And Union City Memorial, Hudson Cafe, Moore Bergen. And the National Division, you got Dickinson, Bayonne, Ferris, Hoboken, McNair, Schneider, and Beloved Charters. So Dickinson's had a great year, 13 and 3. Well, 13 and 2 entering the contest. And, and the Marauders, after that big win, right? After this big win, look, look, look at them celebrating. Look at them celebrating, right? You're thinking, oh, you know, they're, 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 they're not going to be prepared for this game, right? I mean, they were out celebrating. No, 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 my friends. They they, they came out swinging for the fence. It's five goals in the first half to go to a 6 nothing defeat of Dickinson. I mean, boy, five goals in the first half. I mean, that's impressive. Jane Reed with two. Popsiro again gets on the score sheet with another. Andy Mayorga with a goal and assist. Christian Constanzo, Matt Sabero, the other goal scorers with Christian Perez, Velasquez, Alex Turner, Carl Wentz, William Santamaro, and Lucas Santos, each with assists. All three goalies came in for the Marauders. Sami Yanez in goal to start off with two, and the award with two, and Anthony Novello with three. All right. So that, that was the recap of the, of the other two games, right? Because I want to give the, the Hudson County final some shine because, you know, the Marauders obviously won, as we see here. They obviously won. So... We're going to take a look, okay, at the full highlights from this game. It's a lot, lot of calls from Kevin Connolly and myself and Zach Swibel on this one, but I feel like it's warranted to, to listen to the full highlights of this game, courtesy of D1 Media Pro. So, guys, let's take it away. The boys are going to have a lot to live up to as we take the field once again for the Hudson County Tournament Final here in Red Bull Arena in Harrison, New Jersey. Carney, their girls team, a magnificent effort to win in penalty kicks over Bayonne in an instant classic. What are their boys team going to have in store as they take on top-seeded St. Peter's Prep trying to win their first county title since 2019. Touch there from the Cardinals. Benji Silva looking to send across, and Simon Yanez steps in the way. Big situation. St. Peter's is going to throw in again with Chernikov. Into the box looking for Carey. Zoller is there. Shot comes in on goal, and there's a save made by Alex Cruz, his first of the night. Yeah, again, Cruz right there. Andy Mayor going to try to do a half volley there, but again, Cruz is well over that so Brio ready. He's going in towards goal. That comes to the back post. Santamaro there. They score! It's Sayuo! And Prep strikes first. Wow, the freshman once again delivering for the Marauders. Off the loose ball in the box. What a start. And Zach, the freshman Sayuo staying calm and poised inside the six and striking first for St. Peter's. This is exactly what this game was going to come down to. It was going to come down to these fouls and these free kicks. We knew this game was going to be a little bit chippy, and we knew there was going to be a lot of fouls. I said in the very beginning of the game, it's going to come down to who was able to capitalize on those opportunities. The freshman able to stay poised, stay calm inside the box, and get St. Peter's on the board. They strike first. They strike first in the 21st minute. And Philip Sayuo, who was the hero when these two teams met for the first time this season, is the goal scorer to begin this Hudson County final. Carney looking to respond with a set piece of their own. Balls away in towards goal. Yanez there for the stop. In my opinion, that was a bad idea by Carney to shoot there. 
We saw what St. Peter's was able to do on their free kick. Now I from Carney. Asayuo again in towards goal. And Alex Cruz was there. Here comes Zoller speaking of that back line. For Salinas, right footed shot, turned aside by Yanez. It'll be a corner for Carney, their second. That's a good save there by Yanez. You know, the shot was going a little bit wide, so I don't know if it would have stayed out. But good, good job by Yanez for Yak there and forced the corner. Second save of the night for Yanez. Reed able to keep it in play for the Marauders. Sends it back in towards the middle. A shot, or actually a pass, in towards goal. That shot deflects, and it goes wide of Cruz's cage. It deflected off a couple of legs first. Oh, Andy Mayorga looked like he was lining up for a shot. Yeah. Instead, it was a pass to Christian Pereira Velasquez, and his shot attempt is blocked. And now the first corner of the half for St. Peter's. And that was a good pressure by the Marauders there on, on, on Solo on the back line there. For, for, getting the turnover, forcing opportunity. Vieira with 10 seconds. Augusto Vieira going towards goal. Short hops in. It goes wide of Giannis's cage. Did not touch it. It'll be a goal kick. And that's going to do it for the first half. The freshman, Philip Sayuo, is the hero of the opening 40 for the Marauders. His 21st minute goal has put St. Peter's prep on top of Carney. 1-0 after 40 minutes. And they'll stay with Carney as they try and get it back for Zoller. Directing traffic, and the cross is made by Xavier. Out to the far side, it's Silva. Turns the corner around Kirk. Kirk's the one that goes down. We play on. Silva still with it. And Yana is able to snatch the cross out of the air. For St. Peter's just to try and pack their defensive side of the field and make things very difficult for Carney. But River creates space and sends a cross towards that back post. But Gomez missed on the header, and Yanez was there to pick it up. Yeah, I mean, this Carney, this Carney attack right now is going crazy against this Marauder back line. Just did not get his head around fast enough. But you just get the sense, Kevin, that, that Carney is just so close again that tying roll. Okana, who was fouled, is over the ball. Just received some pieces of strategy from Zoller. Okana towards goal, punched out by Yanez, all the way outside the 18. Carney will get on it there. It's the third save of the night from Simon Yanez. And the biggest one yet. Tomas Lois using his big body to try and create space. Good sliding tackle. Lois gets the cross away, and Yanez comes out to pick it up. The senior now minder doing an excellent job controlling things on the back end. It's the rocket leg of Hans Zoller who stands over the ball for Carney. He's ready. His bullet in towards goal. He scores. What a shot by Han Zoller. Han Zoller delivers for the Cardinals and gets the equalizer with 16-15 to play. That one was absolutely ripped into the top left corner. Everybody in the building knew that he was going to shoot that one. He lined up to shoot it. He got ready to shoot it. He took a big lead. They brought their biggest leg in to take the shot, and he ripped that one right past the keeper. Carney finally converts on one of these set pieces, and it's Hans Zoller who delivers the equalizer for the Cardinals. Yeah, they've been pressing Kevin for the past 10 minutes. A well-deserved tying goal there for the Carney Cardinals. Inside the box as Zoller... Sends back downfield, coming out to the near post, and Yanez is there to play. Her service back downfield is punched near midfield by Chernikov's head. Pereira Velasquez downfield, Sayuo battling Lois. Sayuo onside, Sayuo delivers for St. Peter's! The freshman again, the Carney killer. And with 2.21 to go here in the second half, St. Peter's is back up by one. What an individual play by Phelps Sayo, using his speed, knocking off the defender, able to keep possession. And two minutes left to go. Can the Marauders hang on? 78th minute goal from Philip Sayuo. And now all St. Peter's has to do is kill off two minutes and 21 seconds and their county champs for the first time since 2019. 15 seconds remaining. It'll be a big boot downfield from Lois. Bouncing ball at midfield. Solar's on it. He'll look to turn to his right. Now with 10 seconds. He's got Carey in front of him. Solar slides one through. Santamaro breaks it up. Comes inside the 18. Two seconds left. Cleared aside by Kirk. And we have a final. St. Peter's prep 
the Kings of Hudson County for the first time since 2019 as they defeat Kearney here in the Hudson County Tournament Championship game. Philip Sayuo, the freshman, the Kearney killer, delivers again for the Marauders. What a moment for St. Peter's Prep. Celebrating their student body. What a game, Kevin. What, what a finish. Philip Syro, the freshman. Been the Carney killer in that first game. Double overtime. He does it again two minutes to go to give the Marauders their first championship since 2019. St. Peter's prep two and Carney one. Sayuo's goal in the 21st minute and the 78th minute are the difference here in this match as St. Peter's Prep defeats Kearney for the second time this season. This is the 14th county championship for St. Peter's Prep. It's the fourth under head coach Josh Jantis. And again, the Marauders beat Kearney in the county final. They did it for their last championship in 2019. They do it again here in 2023 as St. Peter's Prep are your Hudson County Tournament champions. We're going to stay live down here for the trophy presentation as the Marauders have the trophy and they are going to raise it here in Harrison as they are your 2023 Hudson County Tournament champions. Unbelievable. Unbelievable game. Um, like That was just an unbelievable moment for the soccer team. This whole season, they've been... You know, getting victory after victory. They had that two-game stretch in which they lost to Memorial on the road, and they lost 5 nothing. They got absolutely destroyed by Carney in their last game. Ever since that moment, okay, they have won a whopping nine games out of ten. And the one loss was a double overtime loss that came into the number one team in the country. Like, this team is on a mission right now, ladies and gentlemen. They, they, they may be celebrating that they won counties, but I, I think this team wants more. They, they want states. And we're going to have a look at the bracket once it's officially released, I believe, Monday or Tuesday. But the Marauders will be the number two seed, so they're going to get a home advantage if they, 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 if they play all the way to the final. They'll have home field advantage all the way up until the sectional. Sectional will be at number one CBA that if, if it comes to those two teams. But this team's 16 and 3. That's one of the best records they've had in a long time. This team wants to win it all. They really do. And shout out Philip Syro, man. I mean, he did it in that first matchup in the overtime, double overtime, 30 seconds to go against Carney in the second game of the year. Then he comes out. And probably Prep's biggest moment in about four years in soccer. And what does he do? He gets two goals and coin the game only two minutes ago. When you know Matt Sabrero, he had to come on. He was not 100. percent He he came on. He played well in those final minutes before coming off. But, I mean, 13 goals and five assists for the freshman. He's been good. He's he's something. He's the Carney killer. That's, that's all I'm going to say. Carney killer. So the Marauders, they're going to wait for their seeding. Again, that's going to be hopefully today or tomorrow. It's going to be on a social media page at SOT Marauders. Again, follow, sh share, share the social media links. You can see it right above. We have Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Follow us on all three platforms. Get all your social media content there. But once again, congratulations to the St. Peter's Prep Marauders. You're 29, sorry, 2018, no. You're 2023 20, Hudson County Champions. All right, moving on to our second topic to talk about. What do we got else to talk about, ladies and gentlemen? We got the cross-country squad. They are the Hudson County champions for the seventh consecutive year. There you go. Round of applause. Cross-country, guys. 
they dominated on all three levels. I'm going to start off with the freshman squad. And once again, our guy, Harry Anderson. Again, more of the week than the last week. He ends up in first place at the time of 11.37. Henry Gefillin in fifth. Damon Nagy in seventh. Miles Fajardo in tenth. Caden Poor in eleventh. And then Lucas Lynn, 21st. But the Marauders would win by 28 points over Union City for our freshman guys. For our JV guys, again, it's another dominant performance for the JV squad. They ended up in five of the top six. Yeah, Alex Giantino winning the race at 18.02. Danny Kramer in second. Luke Schreiber in third. Nate Palmerino in fifth. Eli Farmer in sixth. Great job by those guys. Danny McMillan in 11th to round out top 15 for the Marauders. And they would win at 21 points. Let's go, JV guys. Freshman JV with back to back wins. Now, what do we have in store for the varsity guys? And believe it or not, usually we would think Tommy O'Brien's always up there, right? Tommy O'Brien's been probably the best track guy for the varsity guy all, all year long. But this guy set a new course record for the varsity squad. Okay. Harry Anderson also set it for the freshman squad. Uh, Giantino, JV title, but in first place for the varsity squad, it's going to be Aiden Prucher. Go, Aiden. New varsity course record at a time of 16-10. Tommy O'Brien was right behind him. No, Tommy O'Brien was right there. 16-19. Liam and Ivan Rock stood in fourth, respectively. Count Rutledge in 10th and Liam Teleska in 14th to round out that order. And the Marauders, by a whopping 42 points, are your champions of Hudson County. So, great job by those guys to be the seventh time defending, reigning Hudson County champion. Again, congratulations to the cross-country guys. All right. We're going to switch gears. All right? Usually, you know, we go talk about football and all that stuff. But no, no, no. We're, we're, I want to go with some news of the week first. We'll, we'll talk about football once we play the news of the week segment. And that segment is going to be sponsored by our good friends at the Chalk. Podcast. I'm Ignacio Mara alongside Jackson Briamonti. And you know, we're just here to promote an advertisement. Jackson, would you like to explain what the advertisement is? Yeah, so we're here promoting our podcast, Chalk Talk Podcast. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you can find your podcasts. Um, we also have socials such as Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. You want to follow those for additional content along with the podcast. You know, challenge videos, trivia videos, all that good stuff. You know, we're just Two friends that talk sports. You know, we have interviews, cover the latest news, do hot takes. You know, just all the good stuff in the sports world. Getting it out there for you guys to listen and enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're just debating hot takes, all that. And we'll be covering some, some Marauder sports this year, too. So uh, just check us out. We're on TikTok, Instagram, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Chalk Talk Podcast. Enjoy the rest of your event. Chalk Talk out. So, again, make sure you follow them on Spotify and on social media at Chalk Talk underscore podcast. So, without further ado, here are the news of the week. In this week's news... The water polo guys extend their losing streak ah, to six games. Yeah, six game losing streak for our water polo marauders. They would fall by a score of eight to four on Wednesday against Trinity. Nick Valenti had two goals. Ben Lucas, Thomas Gong with goals, 
and then Murkoff had 21 saves as Murkoff will fall to 2-6 and six on the season. In other news of the week, we have two weeks worth of results from the crew team as they battled at the head of the Passaic and at the head of the Charles. So for our crew guys in the men's varsity eight race, the one the eight boat got fifth place out of the 11. And the two the eight boat, they got eighth place out of the 11. And the JV eight boat, which is technically the third varsity eight boat, they got third place for the wall of attempts. That was a great job there. And the men's varsity four race, and the 1v4, they got 7th out of 13th. And the 2v4, they got 9th out of 18. And the freshman 8 race, they got 3rd place and 5th place, which is pretty good. Again, so shout out to our GV8 guys and our freshman 8 guys, right? All great, great stuff there. And then in the head of Charles, we got the varsity 4, varsity 8, both getting 46 and 67 respectively in the country. So it's pretty, pretty good, pretty respectable. So, once again, ladies and gentlemen, we wish congratulations to our crew guys who competed in the head of Psyche and the head of Charles. Again, congratulations to our crew guys. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about the football team. Okay? Senior night. For the football guys. And they hosted Bergen Catholic and absolutely got destroyed once again. 37 7 got a late score in this one. And look, I'm gonna call this the, the, the puddle bowl in Jersey Sick because I don't know if you, you saw the, the images on social media, but it was an absolute monsoon. At least before the game, during the game, a little bit, but there was puddles galore. At Caden Point, ladies and gentlemen, it was absolutely horrendous. And with the way that game felt, who was going to score first was going to get all the momentum in this one. So let's talk about scoring plays right now. Sponsored by our good friends at D1 Media Pro, then one live stream in the state of New Jersey for high school sports. Do you want your school to be covered by the number one live stream service in the state of New Jersey so the entire country can see moments like this? Well, you said Trafford's a shifty back. He gets motioned out. They'll give it right to him on the first down play, and he gets lit up. Oh, what a hit there by Jaden Bonsu. The kid with the pow. Pow. Oh, running people over, still on his feet. He's gone. Touchdown. We got a touchdown. No flags. He's a bruiser. Aziz Foster Howell. Got to come up and lock up on that guy. New Jersey. We do games in PA. We all over the place, man. Oh, they kick it deep. They're going to try to cover this one. Uh-oh. 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 Uh, one man to beat. One man to beat. One man to beat. Touchdown. Join the D1 Media Pro team, New Jersey's number one live streaming service. I want to thank our guy Mustafa Hoover and Kevin Connolly for helping us with D1 Media Pro. Again, they cover a lot of our games, so make sure you subscribe to them on the NFH Network today. All right, so now let's talk about the scoring plays in this one. I want to start off, both teams, again, were looking to get some touchdowns, some points, anything early on, but both teams were trying to get a feel of what's going on. But in the first quarter, Hot Sanders, 42-yard touchdown run to make it 7 nothing Bergen Catholic. And on that extra point that was made, I believe Gaetano Baltomeu, the kicker from Bergen Catholic, was hurt, so then... They would have to run two-point conversions the rest of the way in the second quarter. Dominic Campanelli found who else but the one and only Quincy Porter, 72 yards on the reception. He would take the distance. Again, 
he broke the. He, I mean, he had strides for about forty yards, but then he had to slow up just a little bit to make sure he had it enough so he wouldn't get hurt because all the puddles that were on the right side of, of, of the end zone. I mean, as we talked about on the broadcast, uh, the left side of the field was pretty much dry. He go on the right side; it was puddles galore. So he had to make sure he he he, he stay stayed and stay without getting hurt. You know, because you don't want to get hurt on 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 a, on a wet field. So. Two point conversion, no good. Thirteen nothing, Bergen. Then it was Dante Kane, right? One of many running backs for Bergen Catholic. They had nine guys with rushing attempts in this one. He would go the distance, thirty four yards. Mahajid Russell on the two point conversion make it twenty one to nothing. Heading into the half, Cash Anders his second touchdown of the game, 31, 39 yards. Touchdown run, and the two-point collision was good on a little faith from Dominic Campanelli to Quincy Porter. Again, just he's unstoppable and to, to, to block. Reminds me of DK Metcalf in that situation. Quincy Porter, again, very good wide receiver. And then the final touchdown for the Crusaders to make it 37-0 in the third. Dominic Campanelli to Quincy Porter again. He scrambled out, found Porter in the back of the end zone. And the two-point conversion was good for Mahaja Russell to make it 37 to nothing. Tyler Barksdale will get a late touchdown for the Marauders to make it 37-7. But that would be your final score from Caden Point in Jersey City, 37 to 7. So, turning point of the game. What was the turning point of the game in my estimation? I think it was that first touchdown. The, with the way the the, the the rain impact of the game a lot more than I thought it would be. I thought the rain would play out by that time, but it impacted the scene night ceremonies, impacted the beginning part of the game. Both teams are just trying to get a feel for each other and the conditions as well. But once Bergen got that first touchdown, it felt like, oh, here we go. Here comes the Bergen Catholic Crusader offense that we're used to seeing. Again, the big boys up front, I hear Daniel. First offensive cap tackle going to Georgia. I mean, guy, the offensive line is really good. Really good. They carry the ball 28 times, 247 yards, and three scores. <laughs> They're good. They only pass the ball 12 times, and only played six. So they, they, don't, they don't need to pass the ball to win games. They, they, they could just ground them on you all day long. He, Kosh Shannon, seven carries 116 yards. 116 yards. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of runs. So, turning point of game. Again, yeah, first touchdown. Kosh Anders to make it sound up. Now, the offense. Okay, we're going to talk about the offense and defense. And the, the offense, they, they, they just they couldn't run the ball. Plain and simple. They, they couldn't. The, the prep offense likes to have a balanced approach, right? They want to give Tyler Bell, the young quarterback, sophomore quarterback, they want to give them opportunities to shine. No, they want to give them. Third and manageable, second and manageable. But it was tough because they couldn't run the ball with Speedy. Speedy, Speedy did not have a great game, the offensive line. You know, they tried their best to, to get some, some lanes. They had some, some good blocks at times, but I mean, Speedy had 10 attempts for 13 yards. Can't win. Can't win with the best winning back. It's going 10 carries, 13 yards. Plain simple. Tyler Bell, 9 carries, 32 yards. Again, that also was helped because he had a 35-yard scramble of a play that, that was broken up, that he had to improvise. I mean, Tyler Bell was 8 of 21 passing, 140 yards, two picks. Again, not the best night in the world. Bird Catholic has great corners. That's why they number one state. They're, they're a great talent all over the field. But it's tough. It was a tough offensive night all around. Not, not, not many things broke well for the Marauders. You know, there was a couple explosive plays, you know, one to Hunter Watson near the end of the game, one to DJ Brown in the middle of the game, one to Keyshawn Fasson on the fourth and, and, and forever, right before halftime. But the key part of the offense was the drops. You know, I, I get it was raining. I get it. But it's too many drops. Too many drops on the offensive side of the ball. And they just could not get the flow going at all times. It's tough. You know, the conditions didn't help. But it was just tough sledding for the offense. 
Uh, the defense, I I think, despite the numbers, I know you say, oh, Renato, they let up 200 plus yards on the ground. It wasn't a good performance. I, I with the conditions, I, I especially early on, I think they did a good job. Once it got later into that game, you know, their offensive line is so good. They're just breaking down plays left and right. That's why they got a lot of those explosive plays. I mean, if you want to talk about the intermediate plays, prep the good at. But once again, a theme that's not been as prevalent this year, as we talked about with Justin, you know, they've done a good job in limiting the explosive plays. But in this game, that was the, that was the end of the game. Explosives, right? Kyle Shander with a 42 yard touchdown. Dante Kane's a 33 yard touchdown. Max Nizza a 25 yard run. And see, Porter has a 72 yard touchdown. So, yeah, that's already four plays right there. Four plays and three of those went for touchdowns. So, uh, I mean, the defense at all is good, but Bergen's too good. I think Bergen Catholic St. Joe's. I want to see that matchup again because those are to me those are the two best teams in New Jersey. Bergen Catholic St. Joe's region. But we'll see. The brackets they're gonna come out after our final matchup next week, in which our Marauders would take on the Cena Hall Prep Pirates. And this is going to be an interesting game for two reasons. One, because the 11th, 12th, and 13th seeds is where the Marauders are going to fall as of now, okay? So they're going to travel. So that was the final home game against Berg. But this is a Seton Hall team who are 2-6 and six of the year, okay? This is a Seton Hall team that's been struggling. Perhaps also been struggling. Feels like almost like the prep premise Catholic matchup. You know, the Marauders have won four of the last five. And hey, if the Marauders can win this one, they won two of the three going to the playoffs. It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. You got to worry about Liam Launder again. You know, the quarterback has battled injury at times this year. They've had three quarterbacks play. But based on his last week's stats, he looks to be healthy. And he's going to be a dual threat option. He reminds me a lot of Dan Jones as well. You know, he passed the ball 647 yards. Four touchdowns, eight picks, 164 yards rushing, and two touchdowns. So the eight picks is not good. So if you're on the secondary, maybe try to make some plays happen, some turnovers. That's what the Mars were able to do against Premise Catholic in that matchup. But also keep in mind, his main weapon has been Julius Fakar. Okay, it's 5'10", slot receiver, 503 yards, three touchdowns. But a guy who I'm really worried about is Danny Easter. You know, he gave the Mars fits last year, 259 yards, Two touchdowns. So that's a guy that, that you need to worry about. And on the defensive side, the Beth back, Jalen Jalen McClain has been a force. He's always been a force. Seven night tackles on the year. No one throws his way because he's he's so good. But linebacker Justin Cook has also been a force in the middle of the field. Seven six tackles. They also got two picks as well. So those are those are some some scary cats on the other side. So again. Who, who, which seed are we going to get? We're going to find out after this matchup. We'll, we'll, it's seeded by committee. So, again, we don't have the full projections because, you know, it's, it's, it's seeded manually. But if I were on the committee, I'd say the Marauders would be between 11 and 13 right now. But, again, we'll, we'll see what the committee says next week after the season ends. So, again, the Marauders will be taking on Stina Hall Prep. On Saturday afternoon, from West Orange, in which you can watch that game live on D1 Media Pro. Up to 1 p.m. start on Saturday. I'll be providing updates on the Twitter sphere as well, with our Instagram at SOT Marauders, and on Instagram on our story as well. So again, tune in to see how Marauders do to end their regular season. In other news... One more thing to talk about. Well, two more things to talk about. The prep wrestling team is honoring their 50th year anniversary by having a beefsteak dinner. All right, beefsteak dinner. Very, very, very nice. You know, they always do a, do a great job every year. This time, it's going to be on November 11th, 2023. Again, to support the wrestling's 50th anniversary. You can find all the information for that event on the social media page. At SPP Wrestling on Instagram. All right. So that's at SPP Wrestling on Instagram. So click on there to RSVP for the beefsteak dinner today. 
And the last piece of news we have to talk about is going to be what's on the docket for this week. Let's take a look at what we got going on. We got a little bit of a lighter week. We have Waterpolo having two two matches against Pennington on Monday and Blair Academy on Wednesday before they take on the Garden State duels this weekend on Friday and Saturday. Saturday's a big day for our Mirage because you got the crew team taking on the head of the fish, 8 a.m. at Saratoga Lake. That's going to be a Saturday Sunday affair for the crew team. Football takes on St. Hall Prep, as you mentioned, 1 p.m. at Kelly, uh, Kelly Athletic Complex in West Orange. And the cross country would take on the New Jersey Catholic Track and Field Championships at 1.30 p.m. from Gray Stone Park, right? As we talked about, we're going to wait on the seedings to talk about soccer, but I believe soccer will get a bye into the next round. So I think there will be off this week as a whole. But again, stay tuned for our social media for that. Okay. Last but not least, we're going to talk about my favorite part of the podcast, which is the Marauder Player of the Week Award. And as always, that is going to be sponsored by our good friends at the Chalk Talk Podcast. So, again, without further ado, let's talk about who our Marauder Player of the Week Award winners. We had five great candidates, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Five great candidates in which were nominated last week, including Samanyana from soccer, Harry Anderson from cross country, Jalen Klein and Justin Gonzalez from football, and Alp Ayata from water polo. So, Let's get a drum roll, please. And the winner with 52% of the vote from the football team, it's going to be none other than Justin Gonzalez. Congratulations to Justin on this accomplishment. Congratulations to the football team for getting this as well. So now we got another five great candidates. Another five. So first from the soccer team. If this guy's not nominated. I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. The Carney Killer himself, freshman Philip Sayuro. From the cross country team, this guy got first place in the varsity race. It's always between him and Tommy O'Brien, but this time he took the gold. It's going to be junior Aiden Kutcher. From the football team on senior night, this guy had a heck of a game. He's always had a heck of a game, but then this time in particular, he, he was having, especially in that first half, his name is Joe Asaya, the senior. This next guy from water polo made a whopping 21 saves in the contest. Yes, 21 saves in the contest. And that's the senior goalkeeper, Evan Merker. And last but not least, this guy is the captain of the crew team, the president of the Sports Sports Club, Ben Novoselic. Well, make sure you vote for who you think. Should be this week's Marauder Play of the Week. Again, we've got five great new candidates. Remember that voting will go until this Saturday, October 28th, at 11.59 p.m. And you can only vote once on the app, so make sure you vote who you think should be this week's Marauder Player of the Week. Well, ladies and gentlemen of the State of the Marauders podcast, that's going to do it for another episode. Again, episode number 128. I want to thank you all once again for tuning in to this week's episode. And it's been a fun one, talking about the soccer team and the cross-country teams becoming Hudson County champions and talking about the rest of the program as a whole. There were some great things overall on all fronts. 
And we're looking forward to recapping your Marauders once again next week as the fall playoffs and regular season move on. So, I'm Manuel Rodriguez signing off. And as always, let's go. Prep. <laughs>